you know what, before I potentially hurt myself with a pry bar, I'm just gonna hook a ratchet strap and run it all the way over to the other side of the frame. Hi everybody, good day to you. This is a 2004 Ford F-150. Let's see what we got in here. 148,613 miles in the odometer. Customer states that uh, when going over curves and off of bumps and uh, during normal maneuvering exercises that the front end makes some clunky, rattly noises. So uh, we're gonna go out, hit the road real quick, drive this thing, and uh, see if we cannot duplicate said noises. Begin first click of the day. Safety click. Yeah, we've got some speed bumps and a doodly do. Let's try that. Nope. Let's try over here. How about here? Eh, maybe. Ooh. Here's some brake squeakage. Quite a bit of brake squeakage. Alright, well I'm going to give her the once around the block and uh, we're going to swing back to the shop and just do a visual inspection of the undercarriage, uh, including the brakes. Uh, we didn't mention anything about brakes in our complaints, but uh, I definitely heard some squealing action, so I want to take a look at those. I do see a slightly misaligned steering wheel here. This indicates to me that the suspension alignment may be out of specifications, but we'll deal with that later definitely get a vibration while braking. That's a, that's a pretty heavy vibe too. Lots of run out in the front rotors. Watch the steering wheel for a vibe while braking. Here it comes. Brakes in three, two, one. Look at that. That's insane. Okay, back again. Let's swing this bad boy into the shop. See what's up with our front end and bottom end and all of our other ends too. Let's see where we're going here. Oh no! I ran over my, my plastic thing for my window in my truck. Oh, that's so bad. No, 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 no. We need to reuse this. What is, come on. What is that? Okay. Well, that was embarrassing. Where were we? Doo -doo 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 -doo. That's where we were. Move in. Tight squeeze. Shutting down the auto. Okay, let's set the rack. Uh, this should be fun with these uh, Nerf bars in the way. Oh no, I hope it clears it. I think we'll be all right. We'll see. Uh, a little bit more that way. That way and a little shorter. I think I like it right, right, right about there. That's good. And the same thing. Oh, backside, that's nice. Right there. Good. The right front, that looks good. Actually, that's perfect. Sweet. Sweet. All right. You know what time it is now. It's subscribe button time. <laughs> Couldn't plan that out if I tried. Good. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna take each one of these wheels up front, I'm gonna shake them left and right, shake them up and down, and I'm feeling for looseness or play in any of the components. Mm. Oh, there's some. See that motion? Okay, I put you guys inside of the wheel. This is the right front wheel, here's our tire. Here's our upper control arm right here. That's the spring shock. Here's our ball joint. Uh, I did find some play in this ball joint. I'm gonna shake this wheel and you're gonna watch this ball joint. You're gonna see the motion in it. Yeah, 
Yeah, see all that? That's no good. Let's go check the left front. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that one's good. All right. No movement here. Okay, let's pull this wheel. brakes doing I heard a squeaky oh wow these are like these are brand new it's like 10 11 millimeters of pad thickness in there yeah, let's see yeah, that boots starting to tear but not all the way yet still pull the other side this down near the ground and get under this ball joint stud with a pry bar against the ground and lift up on it and if there's play in it you'll see the motion starting to occur so let's let this down and go check that out next yeah that's probably good right there all right block of wood and a pry bar let's see if we get any action out of this See that? That's crazy. A lot of play. Wow, that thing's gone. Let's check out the other side. All right, we're at the driver's front. Driver's side, lower ball joint. Look at that one. Gone. Watch this. Yep, okay. So I refuse to believe that three of these are destroyed and this one is in good shape. So we're gonna check this one with one more method. We're gonna just squeeze it with some big channel locks. more subtle but you can see it I see it very slight play I am gonna go ahead and recommend both uppers both lowers and a wheel alignment those lowers in that right front upper are actually so worn I would consider them safety issues at this point uh, a good solid pothole can knock one of those guys loose when they get that flippity floppity and or weebly wobbly Okay, got the word. Uh, we have the go-ahead, green light time. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing pulled down. We're gonna be doing uh, upper and lower control arms, both sides. Okay, time to assemble the tools and the lights and the parts to get this thing going. I think first, uh, what I'm gonna do, well, let's see. I guess I'll just break the lower ball joint loose. We'll break the uppers loose. We'll lower the spindle and uh, we'll just see how this thing comes apart the easiest way. Okay, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is take the tie rods off, that way the steering knuckle can uh, move around more freely. That was easy. And I guess while we're here, I'll get the nut for the upper. We'll leave that on right now for safety. And of course, there's the big nut below on the lower. Loud noises. So these pieces here are rather huge and I'm pretty certain that my uh, ball joint pullers are not gonna fit. I know this because I've already checked and uh, my ball joint pullers just do not fit. So we're just gonna smack this with a hammer a couple times until it shocks and then breaks loose from the stud. Beginning linear impacts now.
it come loose? It did. All right. Move up top and get the upper. Got it. Okay, here's the game plan. I'm gonna pick up on this a little bit. And I'm gonna pull the bolt loose, or the nut, off the lower ball joint. There we go. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no commentary right now. This thing is ridiculously heavy and awkward, and I'm just trying to not break the brake hose. Get our big ginormous uh, lower strut bolt out of there next. And nut. I have to do this manually and electronically. That's tight. Ugh. Over there, back into the left. Loud noises. Whoa, that was loud. Holy smokes. Need to put this thing on quiet mode. Now, if I drop it, I'm gonna run. Nobody try to catch it. You hurt yourself. It's just the sway bar link that's holding it in. I probably should have taken it out on top also. What am I doing? Okay, there's one. Let's get the strut down and get the upper out next. Awkward reverse flicks. Uh-oh. No, this isn't working. Yeah, I could probably get that one from the top, but um well, we're not at the top, are we? Best idea ever. Chain drive offset extension. <laughs> Last one right here, reverse clickage. Three coming out. Now we can pull the bolts out that are holding the upper control arm in. How about that? All right, let's get a wrench on it so we can break the nut loose. Put a longer wrench on that for more leverage. Reverse click it there. And repeat on uh, the rear side. Now we'll 
said driver's side. That would have been silly. Two ball joints. All right, new control arm coming in, and it came a little warning tag. It says this arm is an improved forge designed for added strength and durability. It may differ in appearance from the OE. Note: Do not fully tighten bushing bolts until the suspension is at the right ride height, or is at the ride height. Avoid premature bushing wear. All right, new control arm coming in. It matches the old one. Bolts going from the inside out this time. Where's my big nut? Love it. All right, let's maneuver this uh, lower control arm in. Very carefully like. big bolt and uh, number two coming in right behind it oh. yeah right about there okay and one big nut okay let's get this strut back in two bolts facing forward one facing rearward heavier than it looks all right you got one nut on okay nut number two get on there please there and uh one more out in the back Tighten that one out back as far as I can. I'll probably just run that down with the shoving a socket in there. Dude, you're killing me, man. Turn it down. What is going on over there? The radio's out of control. Go. A little bit more on that stud in the back. All right. All right. Let's see what we can do about getting this connected to this. Is this going to work? Sure it is. Came apart, didn't it? Yep. It's going to work. It's kind of going to work. Here, it's got threads. Let's just use those. We'll tighten that down more later. that okay i'm uh, prepared to unhook the spindle here we're going to pick it up and uh, pull it onto the lower ball joint down here 
then once it's in, I'll reach down with the nut and tighten it up. I wonder if I can do this with this thing hanging. Oh, maybe I can. Is this gonna be easier than I thought? What? No. No way. Here's our nut. Oh, yeah, buddy. Look at that. Feel good. It is good. Real good. Clickage. Also, while we're here, we have a, uh, a grease fitting to install uh, right there on the ball joint. What am I doing? Uh-oh. I lost it. I dropped it and lost it. That's not good. I did not want to put this in before hanging the spindle just in case there was a uh, interference. These things happen. There. Oh, come on. I want it to point right about that way. There. Okay, next move, let's get the spindle unhooked and we'll go ahead and set up the upper ball joint. Knuckle. I still say knuckle and spindle interchangeably. Spindles are from back in the day when they had the actual spindle sticking out of the unit and that's what your bearings and your brake rotor would go on. Uh, I don't know if we still use spindles. vehicle somewhere that uses a spindle. Oh, where's my holes at? Right, a little bit more. I see you, Cotter Pinhole. I did kind of shoot myself in the foot though, because the hole is pointed at the metal piece right here, so I gotta be sneaky. I should have considered that and oriented the shaft properly, but I did not. No worries. There. Okay, let's stick our tie rod back in, and then we can go over to the other side and uh, repeat said procedure. I think since we're gonna be repeating the exact same thing over there, there's some stuff that I'm going to do in ultra high speed, lightning fast motion. Uh, some stuff not. I'll probably switch in and out. That way it saves us some time. Click. I better tighten these lower control arm bolts a little bit while I'm down here too. Just a little bit. Okay, one side done except for a sway bar link. One side to go. Let's go on over to the other side and get that one torn down.
It's a good thing that was fast because I'm out of hours in my day and I'm trying to go. So you just saw all the control arms are back in. They've been greased both sides. I greased the other side when you guys weren't looking. Uh, the only thing left here for me to do is to clean off the fingerprints and I will not be depriving you of the part that you came here to see most. Shiny. Let me go make the other side shiny. We'll throw this wheel on and then get over to the alignment rack. All right, everybody. Like I mentioned earlier, it's late in the day. And additionally, this video is getting pretty long. Therefore, I'm gonna go ahead and end this one. What's coming up tomorrow in part two is gonna be the intricate wheel alignment that I have to perform in this vehicle. And I say intricate, because all of the suspension components are out of their positions with the exception of the front tie rods. So I'm gonna have an interesting procedure ahead of me. I hope to see you over on the next video for part two. Thanks for watching. And as always, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later.